glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to God. We're going to Genesis 37 and 5. Genesis 37 and 5. Glory to God. We give our reverence to God who is the head of our life. We thank God for our pastor, Pastor Eric Love, and our leading lady, Sister Katrina Love. We thank God for them. We thank God that today they are away and they're resting and relaxing, and I hope. Hope that they are really getting rejuvenated. Amen. First of all, I want to thank God for the family that blessed them with the trip. Glory to God. Come on, come on. Let's give it up for that family. Because first aid is pastor's aid. In other words, how do you aid your pastor? You have to be able to heal him by giving him ways to get away. Sometimes he needs to just get away and just forget about everything, the stresses and strains of life, and just relax. Glory to God. First aid is pastor's aid. Glory to God. To you, everyone in our respective places. To my beautiful wife. Glory to God. Glory to God. I love you, baby. To my beautiful kids. My handsome and beautiful kids. So I say they gonna get on me if I say beautiful. Them boys will. Glory to God. To you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Our scripture reading comes from Genesis 37 and 5, and also we're going to also look at Genesis 42 and 6. The very familiar passage of scripture, 37 and 5, reads like this. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams. And for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept matters in mind. Let's turn to 42 and 6. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him. Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him. Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. May God bless them to the reader, the hearer, the most of all, the doers of his holy word. Before you take your seat, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Pastor Mac is going to talk about purpose has to kiss destiny. 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 Purpose 
is the reason in which something is done. It's the reason why you do what you do. It's the reason something was created. Purpose is the reason something exists. Are y'all going to pray with me? Purpose is the reason behind the madness. Purpose is the propeller that drives the boat across the water. Purpose is the hand in your back. Every time you want to quit, every time you want to give up, every time you want to throw in the towel, purpose is that thing that will not let you quit. Purpose is that thing that every time you feel like just saying, I don't want to do this no more. It's the thing that makes you keep going. Destiny is the thing that will not stop until it is obtained. It's the goal, it's the object that you're trying to get to. Destiny. Purpose has the kids' destiny. From the foundations of the earth, when God said, let there be, purpose and destiny was created even before you and I was even born. When God said, let there be, you and I weren't even born yet. But in those very moments, in those very words when God said, let there be, your purpose was created. You weren't even here yet, but your purpose and your destiny was already created. It was just waiting on you to get here. None of us, when we were born, none of us knew our purpose. Are y'all going to pray? Well, I ain't going to be long. Y'all know me. I, I, I don't do nothing long. None of us. None of us knew what our purpose was. None of us knew what our destiny was. But purpose and destiny, they must kiss. Purpose and destiny, they must meet up. Sooner or later, your purpose and destiny has to align. Paul said it best like this in Romans 8 and 29. Say, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Then 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priest. In other words, you are already predestined for something greater than what you're doing right now. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says it like this here. says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. In other words, I know the destiny that I have just for you. So how do we get purpose huh, to get us to destiny? God takes life situation and causes life's obstacles and life's trials to push, to move, to form, to get us to the destiny that God wants us at. So here it is we see in the life of Joseph. When Joseph had the first dream, can't you imagine Joseph saw point A and point B had a straight line? Can y'all put that one up for me? In, in our mind, we see purpose going to destiny. We see it straight line. Okay. We see it going from here to Dallas, straight 20. Am I right about it? But in God's mind, 
Put the second one up. God's infinite wisdom. He sees. He don't see it like we see it. All I saw was point A to point B. But God sees point A to point B. But it's going to be some crooks and some turns. It's going to be some hardship. It's going to be some stuff that's going to come at us. And it's going to hit us like a ton of bricks. But God knows the thoughts that he thinks toward us. Yeah, if you, sometimes you can go to, to dollars going to 20. But if it's a wreck on 20, if it's some construction that's going to cause some different stuff to mess up your car, the state will take and send you on a detour. Uh, if God is trying to get you to your destiny, he has to take you around the way to make you really. Uh, Sometimes he has to take you through some stuff to humble you, to make you appreciate it. Here it is. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. Joseph had in his mind when God showed him the dream. He knew I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to be this great person. He knew it. He had a dream. He says that the first dream he dreamed, he said, we was out binding wheat. We was getting the wheat together. We was getting the sugar cane together. We was getting the corn together. We was getting some kind of, some kind of grain together. And while we was getting this grain together, he says that all of a sudden, his grain stood up and the rest of the grain bowed down to his grain. He told this to his brothers. Huh. This is the thing that gets me. You can't tell everybody your dream. Why? Because the devil has some folk henpecked. He got some folk picked out just to cut your dream off. Have you ever been around somebody, you told them your dream, you said, hey, you know, God is showing me this vision of what I'm going to be. And the whole time you're talking, they got this look on his face like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. But the whole time... And in their mind, they're cutting everything that you're saying down. Then the Bible says that Joseph dreamed another dream. He dreamed this time, he says, that the sun, which is his daddy, the moon, which is his mom, and the 11 stars, his brothers, are going to bow down unto him. He told this to his brothers. Now his brothers are more envious because he says, how dare you say that we're going to bow down to you? you the baby boy. Oh, 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 oh. Sometimes, because you're the baby of the family, ask me how I know. Sometimes, because you are the baby of the family, nobody wants to hear what you got to say because I already look at you as he's the runt of the brunch. He's the one that everybody, he always, I, 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 I did stupid stuff. Don't get me wrong. I used to, I, I was the one that played the, tr- the, the, the pranks on my brothers and sisters. I was the one that always did stuff. So they always look at me as, he ain't nothing but Wayne. This is how they looking at Joseph. He ain't nothing but Joe. He's just a common old Joe. He's a nobody. And how in the world is he going? And sometimes your mom and daddy don't even believe in you. But you got to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is trying to get you to destiny. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that Joseph now, he wants to, I don't understand this part because when they already done said they don't believe in you by showing you their actions, actions speak loud in words. 
Now what he does, Joseph says, let me go and try to see about my brothers to make sure they're okay. Now, this lets us know that Joseph had some character at a young age. Because he wants to go see about them even though they don't care about him. Okay. He goes out and he's, his brothers are tending to the fields. He goes out and finds them, but his own brothers look up and see him, and they say, there goes that dreamer. Yeah. There goes that dreamer. There go the ones that think he's all that. He thinks he's going to be bad in us. He ain't trying to say he's going to. He just said what God showed him in a dream. Yeah. 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 The Bible says that. They say, here goes that dreamer. They begin to make a plot to kill him. You mean to tell me they want to kill him simply because he had a dream? Some folk want to kill you just because you open up your mouth and you got a dream. Some folk want to kill everything inside of you simply because you open up your mouth and you had a dream. Just because you said what God said you was going to be. I said that country, yeah, you was going to be. Here it is. And when Joseph gets close to them, the Bible says that they said, we're going to kill him, and we're going to take a goat or uh, a wild animal, and we're going to get the blood and put it all over that favorite coat that daddy made for him. Daddy think he's so special. We're going to take him out of there and see what's going to happen to daddy. Here it is. It was one in the bunch by the name of Reuben. Reuben says, don't kill him. Now, a lot of times, we, we, we take this and we say, oh, Reuben was the one that saved him. No, Reuben ain't did nothing. <laughs> Reuben ain't did a doggone thing. Reuben's still just as guilty as everybody else. Because even though you didn't want to kill him by putting the blood and stuff on him, you still said, let's put him in a pit. So how are we going to give him credit when he's still a fool like the rest of them? Here it is. He says, let's just take and put him in a pit. They throw Joseph in a pit. Joseph is down in this dirty place. It's a place, it's a void place. It's a place that seems like everything should be over and done with. But I can see Joseph off inside the pit. Can't y'all see him? Can you use your imagination? Joseph is in the pit and Seem like it's all over. But I can hear Joseph's dream begin to speak to him. Joseph's purpose begins to talk to him and say, Boy, it ain't over. I know it seems like you're down, and the very folk that you love the most are the ones that put you here. But boy, get up and Shake the dust off of you. You got to understand that this is not the end for you. This is really the beginning. Because what I'm doing for you is taking you away from jealous people so that I can put you and position you to get to your destiny. Boy, get up from here. Shake yourself off. And all of a sudden, the Bible says there's a million night traders, traders that are coming by. They said, hey, let's get them out the pit and sell them. To these trade, let's make him a slave. Oh, so they don't want to serve him, but they want him to serve others. <laughs> Here it is. Now they sell him, and he goes into the slave trade. He ends up now in Potiphar's house. He ends up. It's funny to me because no matter what they do to Joseph, he ends up on the top. When you have purpose and destiny on your life, no matter what's done to you, no matter what the devil shows at you, you still going to be like the cream. You're going to always rise to the top. No matter what happens to you, Rod, you're going to always rise to the top. No matter what's happening to you right now, you're going to always. Have you ever seen a Cheerio? Have y'all ever seen a Cheerio? You ever seen a Cheerio? When you put a Cheerio off in milk, you can take the spoon and push it all day long. 
But every time the Cheerio is going to pop back up to the top. This, is, this, this here is the, the Bible according to Cheerios. Every time you push the Cheerio down, it finds a way. You can hold it down for five seconds, ten seconds. It's still going to bounce back up to the top. The Bible says, the Bible says that Joseph now, Joseph now is in Potiphar's house. But while Joseph is in Potiphar's house, there is a woman <laughs> that looks at Joseph the same way my wife looked at me. Y'all know I got to make you laugh a little bit. The Bible says that huh, Joseph is in Potiphar's house. He ended up rising to the top of being over everybody. And the Bible says that Potiphar's wife looks at Joseph and says, boy, Joseph looks just like Dwayne. He's fine. He looks at Joseph, and he says, Joseph, she says, Joseph, mm, mm. She starts singing her, mo her song, after the morning, after. She already got in her mind what she wanted. She wanted to tell Joseph up. The Bible says that Joseph was handsome and good to look upon. He was well built. He was stocky like me, you know. See that? <laughs> the Bible says that she looks at Joseph <laughs> and she begins to have feelings for Joseph. So one day, Joseph, it's amazing what folk can do when ain't nobody around. When Joseph finds himself all alone, I can hear her come in there uh, and she starts saying, Hey, Joseph. How you doing, Joseph? You doing all right? Joseph said, Yeah, I'm good. He probably said in the back of his mind, Lord, let this woman leave me alone. <laughs> so the Bible says that she looks at Joseph with hungry eyes and the next thing you know, she takes and grabs hold of Joseph by the cloak. In other words, she grabbed him by, okay, the family, the family jewels. She grabs him by his cloak. And Joseph, she wants to rape Joseph. But Joseph's character would not let him. Hmm. And our pastor has been talking about character. Character is the thing that holds you, ain't nobody around. Because Joseph could have done the business, he could have done the deed, but what profits him to do that? And lose his whole soul. What profits him to gain the whole world? What profits him to live in vanity? What profits him to grab hold to something that could cause his whole destiny? Oh, oh. Sometimes we can do stuff and it changes the whole trajectory of where we're trying to go. The Bible says that Joseph ran to get away. <laughs> That's right. To get away from her. She screams out rape, says that he raped her all along. She's trying to rape him. The Bible says now he finds himself in prison. All because he tried to do the right thing. He finds himself in prison. The Bible says, but that is just the right place for you, Joseph. I got you right. Well, I know it don't feel good. 
I know it don't look good, but I got you right where well, I got you in the palm of my hand, Joseph. It's a nasty place. You're in a place where all kinds of things are going on, but I got you right where I want you. It don't feel good where you're at, but I got you. It don't feel good. Everything is coming, but I got you. I got you where I want you. I got you. Joe, I got you. I got you. The Bible says that he's now in prison. But Joseph is a dreamer. Joseph can interpret dreams. So now the Bible, the Bible says that Joseph is in prison. And somehow, Pharaoh's baker and butler end up in jail. The Bible says that now uh, they have dreams. They tell Joseph about the dream. Joseph inter interprets the dream. And the Bible says that Joe tells them, uh, Baker, you're going to put the cup back in Pharaoh's hand. again. You're going to return back to your rightful place in the kingdom with Pharaoh. He says, but the Baker, he says, not, not so good for you. Not so good. He says that uh, you're going to be hanged in front of everybody. Uh, so he tells them, he says, now, after this comes to pass, make sure you don't forget about me. Don't forget about your boy. When you, when, when you go back and you place that cup back in Pharaoh's hand, don't you forget about me. But I got sad news for you. A lot of times we can um, do good stuff for people. But when they get exalted to where they're supposed to be, when they get to the place where they are not blessed and highly favored, when they get to the place where they are not millionaires and they can help somebody else, sometimes they get stingy and forget all about other folk. Forget about the person that helped them. You was the one that gave them the business plan. You was the one that showed them how to get there. But all of a sudden now, you forget about the one that helped you get there. The Bible says that now Joseph is still sitting in jail while the one is living fancy free, while the butler is living fancy free. The Bible, the Bible goes on to say that Joseph now is looking, trying to figure out why in the world, am I still here? The Bible tells us he's there for a purpose. That wasn't his time. The Bible says that now Pharaoh dreams a dream. Pharaoh dreams a dream, and he gets all of these soothsayers, these musicians, he gets all these folk to come around, and all of these folk to try to interpret. Nobody could interpret his dream. But at the right time, the right appointed time, God has somebody to bring your name up and it gets you out of what you're in. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on now. The butler, he remembers, he says, that was a man back in the prison. We had dreams and he told us everything, everything came to pass like it said. He says, can you talk to him? So they go and they bring Joseph up in front of Pharaoh. I'm getting ready to close. I'm about to preach, so I'm going to say that about two more times. So, so he now gets up in front of Pharaoh. He tells Pharaoh all his dream. And he says, there's no man that could tell me, so God had to have told you this. The Bible says that now God uses Pharaoh, the enemy, to now place him in destiny. Hmm. Now he's at the place where he's supposed to be. The Bible says that Joseph's brothers and all the land in Canada a famine. And there's nowhere for his brothers to buy grain. His daddy said, y'all go to Egypt, and when you get there, buy some grain. 
They go to Egypt and they get there and Joseph sees his brothers coming from a fall. These are the ones who plotted to kill him. These are the ones who plotted to take him out. These are the same jokers that did all kind of evil, didn't want to hear nothing he had to say. But Joseph holds his character. Joseph remains who God says he is. He's God's favor. So he remains who God says. No matter what is coming at you, you know they did you wrong. You know what they did to you, but don't let, the, you know, don't let that get the best of you to where now you forget everything that you are. You lose yourself because you got to get them back. Let me tell you what happened to me. Uh, I got fired from Longview Asphalt a few years ago. And boy, that joker had me hide as fish grease. I thought I was over it, y'all. I thought I, I saw this dude. He was on the street. We was driving down 80. And before I knew it, I said, oh, that go that dude know. Can I be honest with y'all? I said some stuff I shouldn't have said. My wife said, baby, baby, come back. But... I'm telling y'all this because sometimes God will test you to see if, he, if you're at the place yet where he can bless you. Because I saw that sucker and I just, Lord, forgive me. I hope I ain't. Lord, don't let me go back. And I saw him and when I saw him, something just went from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Just went all over me because it felt like I was right back in that same place again. This is the joker that got me fired. But you have to hold who you are and be what God has called you to be. The Bible says that when Joseph saw them, Joseph could have went off. He could have got revenge, but the Bible says he didn't. He held himself, and he decided to help his own brothers, the ones that tried to kill him, the ones that put him in the pit, the ones that sold him, the ones that did him wrong, the ones that talked about him like a dog. He decided instead, I'm going to love them. I'm going to still show compassion. Can you show compassion unto somebody else when they've done you wrong? The Bible says that Joseph showed compassion then he said, let me see if they really change. What he does is he tells his servants, he said, I need you to put the silver back in their bags. But I need you to put my cup in the other, the baby brother's bag. The Bible says that they get down the road and they are about to get out. And the servant goes and he inspects their bags. And here it is. They find Joseph's cup. They said, our master showed y'all compassion. But you got the nerve to steal from him. He says, I tell you what. Go home and get the baby brother and bring him back. There's another son. Bring him back. We're going to keep this son, but get the other brother and bring him back. The Bible says that they go home because they're saying to themselves, now we've already lost our brother Joseph. Now we're about to lose our other brother. The Bible says that then now Joseph goes to Jacob, the father. Jacob says, I can surely die. He said, because now I have nothing to live for. So all of a sudden now, they go back with the baby brother. Now, Joseph, Jacob is at home. Jacob seems like he has nothing to live for. The Bible says that when they get there, Joseph sees them. And Joseph now reveals himself to his brothers. His brothers are looking at him. He's in his destiny. His brothers 
are looking at him and they're saying, man, this can't be you. We sold you. They didn't know that everything they had done was for his good. They didn't understand that all of these life circumstances, these life trials was pushing and moving things to put Joseph in his respective place. The Bible says that now they sin and get Jacob, the dad. The dad comes back and the Bible says that he falls on Joseph's neck and they weep and cry because he thought surely that his son was dead. The Bible says that, I'm cutting across the field now. The Bible says that Joseph now has a son. The Bible says that they named his son Manasseh. And I'm really, I'm really getting ready to close. He, I wondered, I said, Lord, why did he name him Manasseh? Manasseh means God made me forget. When you do an exhaustive study on Manasseh, it means I let that go. In order for you to get to destiny, hear me and hear me well. In order for you to get to destiny, you got to forget some things which are behind you. And you got to press toward the mark of the high call which is in Christ. You have to learn how to let that go. Forget all of the stuff. Forget all the hurt that they caused you. Forget all of the pain that they caused you and learn how to let that go. Because the Bible said he had another son. His other son's name was Ephraim. And Ephraim means God has made me fruitful. God has multiplied me. So once I learn how to forget, once I learn how to let that go, now God has open opportunity now to bless me in my destiny. How does he do that? Now he can make me fruitful and cause me to multiply. God calls him to forget. And when he calls him to forget, he made him fruitful and multiply. Now Joseph's purpose has finally met his destiny because he learned how to let it go. And when he learned how to let it go, now he's able to move on with his life. And God can bless him like he's never been blessed before. But he had to see if he would actually let it go. And I got a one question I want to ask you this morning, and I'm through. Is there something in your life that you're holding on to that God is trying to get you to mark it by naming it Manasseh? Is something in your life that God is trying to get you to let go? It's something that you've been holding on to for so long. You've been holding on to it how they did you so wrong. You've been holding on to it how mama and them did you wrong, how daddy wasn't there. You've been holding on to your brothers how they didn't look at you as the way they looked at everybody else. They looked at you for who you was. They didn't see you for the purpose and the destiny that you had in your life. So I want to ask you a question. Is there something that you're holding on to that you are refusing to let go? I want to make an appeal to you. I'm through. If you know that you have something in your heart that you've been holding on to, I dare you to walk down to the altar. I dare you to make a step and come down here and let's have a little talk with Jesus. And let's give it all 
Because you cannot be fruitful and multiply. You cannot get what God wants you to get if you're going to hold on and fester this hate. You're going to hold on and fester this unforgiveness. You'll never see the benefits that God has for your life until you finally let it go.